you know, if co-ops are to be a big part of the energy mix, then we have to be big, being able to do it at scale with solutions like Ripples, where, you know, you can have tens of thousands of people coming together um, in a single co-op and, and, and making an amazing thing happen. We're here with Rose Marley from Co-ops UK. Um, so yeah, Rose, thank you for um, joining. It's really, really great. And do you want to kind of just talk us through what um, a co-op is and, and how they're so great? Uh, a cooperative is an organisation that's owned and controlled by its members. So that might be uh, customers and consumers of a supermarket. It might be fans of a football club, tenants of a housing association, or energy users of an energy co-op. Um, and the reason uh, co-ops are getting all the attention that they're getting at the moment, you might have seen that our new government uh, made sure that cooperative growth is in the manifesto. I was at the United Nations last week where in 2025, the UN will be declaring 2025 as the UN year of the cooperative. The reason for this in the kind of economic strategy uh, and thinking. Well, from the UN's perspective, co-ops are proven to help deliver against the UN's sustainable development goals. And when it comes to the UK, you know, we know we've got to grow, but we need inclusive growth. And when you look at all the co-ops and mutuals in the UK, when you add those together, they bring in 87 billion to the UK. But critically, the majority of that 87 billion stays in the UK because those members own and control what happens to those businesses. And they've got a vested interest, they've got a stake in the say, in the way the organisation is run, which has proven to produce better outcomes for the workers, the customers, society, and most importantly, in today's conversation, the climate. Fab. Yeah, no, we are very, very excited about what the future for co-ops can hold, uh, both in the UK and more widely as well. We think there's a very, very bright future for them. Um, and so previously you've kind of said um, that the Ripple, so Ripple co-ops enable thousands of people to come together and collectively own big wind farms and, and solar parks. And our last two share offers were the, the largest two ever co-op share raises in, in UK history. So can you just tell us a bit about um, what maybe co-ops, what, 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 why that is so kind of unusual in the UK? Yeah, no, it, it's it, phenomenal what Ripple Energy has, has achieved because this is when co-ops work beautifully, you're addressing a problem with a really kind of circular solution. So by owning part of a renewable energy project, members directly contribute to reducing carbon emissions. I think people are so overwhelmed with, well, what can I do? I think it's really, really important that things can work at scale because, you know, if there's this huge, huge, you know, the climate crisis is massive and it's really, really urgent. And so we need solutions that can deliver at scale because the challenge is just so massive. So, you know, we've got our, our White Law Bray project is open. That's a 60 megawatt project. So, you know, we are just, you know, our projects are kind of getting bigger and bigger. Um, and yeah, we, we think it's really, really important that we can get, you know, if co-ops are to be a big part of the energy mix, then we have to be big, being able to do it at scale with solutions like Ripples, where, you know, you can have tens of thousands of people coming together um, in a single co-op and, and, and making an amazing thing happen. So Cooperatives UK has endorsed Ripple Energy in the past for having the two single biggest community share offer raises for cooperatives in UK history. It demonstrates that community energy can operate at scale and still deliver uh, reductions in uh, customer bills um, and reductions to damage to the environment. It's an absolute win-win. And then, Rosie, do you want to talk a bit about, so we've got the co-op um, fortnight. Do you want to tell us a bit about that. So in Co-op Fortnite, as you, as you rightly uh, say there, Co-op Fortnite, obviously with the general election being called and Co-op Fortnite being in the time of the general election, it was very much about this call for cooperative uh, growth. But our members have consistently said, we need to address climate. We want Co-op Fortnite to focus on climate. So a big piece about it is actually really, it's been about talking about those models um, in, in media that we might not usually be in, uh, sharing that message. So in terms of that co-op fortnight piece and that call for cooperative growth, and you know, obviously we're really pleased that we've got a new government that's recognising that call and is very explicitly saying that they are going to double the size of the cooperative sector. 
uh, brilliant. But what do we mean by that? Well, we mean that we need to unlock capital and finance because I say, Ripple, you've done incredibly well with your community share offer. Um, but I, I'm, I'm very certain it's not been easy. Um, and it, it's not easy to raise financing co-ops because there is no, like I said, there's no extraction. There's no venture capitalist coming in, putting in loads of money, being able to make loads of money and then pull their money back out. Actually, in a co-op, you put your money in and it, it, it stays there for what it's doing and you work with the organisation. So it's a very, very different kind of investment uh, community shares. So we need more tools. Community shares works uh, really well in some examples like energy. We do need to unlock growth. We need to remove barriers. There are barriers, uh, legislative barriers. So we're working with the Law Commission on that. We've touched on it earlier. Uh, we need to accelerate replication of things that work. There are solutions out there. So it's not just in energy. We see them in, in for example, um, housing, which is another uh, broken uh, market we've got in the UK. You know, water, like, hello, you know, if the people that drank and, and swam in Thames water owned it and controlled it, do you think they'd be pumping sewage into it? There's really obvious, obvious solutions in, in co-ops that we could be replicating, Ripple being a brilliant example. Um, empowering people, particularly the workers, to take ownership and control. Again, look at our railways. I know we're going to a nationalisation model, but let's just hope the worker voice is in there because I'm fairly certain that if the railways were owned and controlled by uh, the, the workers that they would be able to get the right trains to the right stations with the right uh, people on board to be able to leave on time. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Um, and then critically, what we added into that growth plan is this action on climate, because as I've said time and time again, and we've proven in, in the lead up to, I think it was COP26 when we first did our research around this, co-ops tend to have net zero plans, one in five more than traditional forms of business. Co-ops operate to values and principles, one of them being care and concern for the community, which means that that consideration over and above a shareholder consideration is like, what are we doing to the world? What are we doing to people? What are we doing to the community? So by default, if you unlock co-ops, you start uh, to unlock uh, you know, a greater move towards uh, a just transition. Uh, with regards to the climate but like i say energy co-ops you know we've got these amazing uh, opportunities at scale but we've also got tiny weenie co-ops you know a whole bunch of people put coming together on their street and putting solar panels on their street as an energy co-op is as valid and as important and let's hope that what we see now uh, with great british energy is the growth of those smaller co-ops the larger co-ops but actually you know, it's our wind, it's our tidal, it's our air. Like, why, why are we allowing that to be extracted out of the UK into other organisations? Why are we not using the solutions that we've got that are proven to work with the glowing, shining example uh, that is Ripple and replicating that across uh, the country? So that's what our co-op call for growth is. And if you go to uk.coop, Call for cooperative growth. You can uh, find out more about it there. Fabulous. And I, I think another thing. Um, so you know, obviously, there's this amazing transition that's happening at the moment as we move to a zero carbon economy. And you know, one of the things about that, particularly for energy, is you know, you can't own. Or very difficult to you know cooperatively own a coal mine or a gas field or an oil field, but actually. With a wind farm and a solar farm, you absolutely can own a tiny little bit through a co-op and then get your the power that, that, that your individual share generates. So it kind of unlocks this transition, unlocks new ways of doing things and new forms of, of ownerships, which is yeah exactly what we want to be um, yeah going with because it's such a huge opportunity. And and Sarah, I've, we've seen this in other areas. I mean, I love about the Ripple offer. It's like the credit card size. You know, you can own that much of a wind turbine. They're making it like really explicit to people so that they understand. Like, no, I actually get to own a little piece of it. I think that's really important. But again, um, the idea that, you know, you have this kind of, uh, you know, nimby behaviour about, you know, wind farms because it ruins the, the, the view, etc. But what we've seen uh, in some uh, areas is that when people have invested in that wind turbine and they can see it turning, they know it's reducing their bill and it sort of alleviates that kind of concern around it's ruining my view. Is that something you've experienced at all? Well, so we have, yeah, we have members who live near near Project and they are kind of, I think all the other members are quite jealous of them because if they can sort of see the turbines going round. But in the Netherlands, there's this concept called, um, obviously like everyone knows about NIMBY, 
but there's this concept in Netherlands called oi oi, which is only if I own it. So it is that kind of idea that like, yeah, you can build a wind farm here, but only if I own it kind of thing. And it just flips that whole argument on, on its head that actually local people are totally on board with it, but they really, really want to be a genuine part of it. And, and I think that's another amazing thing about co-ops is they totally unleash all of this kind of like local um, enthusiasm for projects because, you know, we see time and time again, poll after poll, people absolutely love onshore wind, offshore wind and solar, but it's really important that they can be a proper genuine part of it. And that's what co-ops can, can deliver, which is, yeah, amazing. I think that's brilliant and a great way uh, to end II. We need more II. Let's campaign for uh, II in uh, energy. Uh, and just thank you again for everything that you're doing because uh, it's really important work and it's just being that beacon of sustainability and what can be achieved when people come together with the same aim and ambition and you've done an absolutely sterling job at, at really demonstrating that. So thank you so much, Ripple.